What's up, sports fans? This is the Lucas Ross Sports Channel, and it's time to continue our 2023 college football predictions for the 2023 college football season. Up next is the Texas A&M Aggies. Texas A&M coming off a disappointing 5-7 record in 2022. Really wasn't just about the overall record for this Texas A&M team. They did have a tough, a pretty tough schedule last year. Of course, they had to go through the SEC West, and they did have a tough non-conference schedule. They did lose to App State at home, and they also had to play Miami out of the non-conference. But Texas A&M definitely had a disappointing season, and of course, that was, of course, they had the young team last year, and of course, they struggled at the quarterback position. You had Max Johnson coming over from LSU, maybe to give them hope, but he got injured in the season. So I think that kind of ruined Texas A&M's chances of making it to a bowl game last year. Looking at the schedule for Texas A&M this year, they do play New Mexico. They play on the road at Miami on September the 9th. That's a big non-conference game there. Of course, that's a rematch from last year's game. And then you get UL and Monroe and also Albini Christian in the non-conference. So not too bad of a non-conference schedule for Texas A&M. And then you look at who they play outside of the SEC West. They do play Tennessee on the road. That's, of course, their toughest one there on the road out of the East. And then they play South Carolina at home, which they play the Gamecocks every single year. But, yeah, Tennessee on the road is going to be a tough one. And then, of course, what makes this schedule so much tougher is definitely because they have to go through the SEC West. But let's get right to the prediction here for this Texas A&M team. And we'll go game by game and give you an official prediction for this team. And looking at their first game, they do kick off against New Mexico here on September the 2nd. I think Texas A&M should roll pretty easily in this game. I think with um, the new offense system under Bobby Petrino, I think Texas A&M will score a lot of points in this game. And I got the Aggies starting out 1-0 pretty easily. Then they'll play Miami on the road here the next week on September the 9th. Big non-conference game here, a rematch from last year's game. Miami is kind of similar to Texas A&M in returning production, and they also were very similar to last year. They went 5-7 and seven as well. So both of these teams missed out on a bowl game last year, which was pretty interesting. Looking at the game from last year, it was a really short-scoring game. Texas A&M able to come away with that win by 17-13. I think it's kind of similar to last year. It can go either way, but I don't, I don't really expect a shootout between these two teams. It's definitely going to be a defensive, hard-fought game. I mean, both of these teams are definitely similar in returning production. With that being said, it's a tough one to call for me, and usually when I've been doing my predictions, I've been just going with home field advantage in all these games. And usually when it's a 50-50 game, I like the home team in this one. So with that being said, I like Miami in a close, low-scoring type game here against the Texas A&M Maggies, and I got Texas A&M falling to 1-1. One one. But then they'll take care of business against UL Monroe, and then that time they'll take um, they'll improve to 2-1. Two and one. Then they'll play Auburn on September the 23rd. Um, Auburn, this is kind of a trap game for Texas A&M. Uh, this will open up SEC play for Texas A&M as well. You know, last year they played um, Auburn in the late part of November, but this year they're playing in the early part of September. And that's kind of interesting. you got a home game here against Auburn in the month of September, but I think Auburn's going to have the talent to compete with this Texas A&M team, but the question is, are they going to be good enough to really be able to run under that new system of Hugh Freeze? That's going to be the question, but I think this will be a high-scoring type ball game here, maybe in the 30s perhaps. At the end of the day, though, I think home field advantage does favor Texas A&M in this one. With that being said, I like the Aggies here in a close one over the Tigers. It's definitely going to be a shootout, but I think Texas A&M comes away with the win. And they'll play Arkansas here at Arlington in Texas. This is a game that's held every year at Arlington. Uh, the question is, will it be held every single year when Texas and Oklahoma come to the SEC next year? And this game is on September the 30th, and it's usually that time where they do play them in the month of September. Um, Arkansas has got a lot of question marks, but you got K.J. Jefferson back at quarterback. I think this is still interesting of the ball game, no doubt about it, because it can go either way. Obviously, Texas A&M did defeat Arkansas last year, which they weren't the favorites going into that game, I think. So, yeah, that was pretty interesting last year. Arkansas could have beaten Texas A&M, and their season probably would have been better. Texas A&M probably could have finished 4-8 and eight last year if they lost to Arkansas, but 
this year, I mean, it's no exception. I think Texas A&M has the more talented team here. I think, you know, it comes down to returning production when I do these neutral site games. With that being said, Texas A&M has the more experienced team in this one, the most reduction coming back. With that being said, I think in a close one, Texas A&M does defeat Arkansas here, and I got them improving to 4-1. and one. Then it's Alabama after that on October the 7th. So you're coming off a big win against Arkansas. Maybe they're overlooking Arkansas from last week, and now they're focused on Alabama this weekend here. Um, Alabama's just, just got a lot of question marks. Both of these teams are kind of similar, you know, in the quarterback position. Of course, you know, Alabama's had their problems now in the last couple years. You know, against Texas A&M, Texas A&M's had Alabama's number in the last couple of years, but they just haven't been able to defeat them. I remember a couple of years ago when they came to Kyle Field, Alabama lost to Texas A&M. And then last year, Texas A&M almost beat Alabama on the road at Tuscaloosa. But this year, it's at Kyle Field. Texas A&M has the team to really compete with this Alabama team, and it's definitely one of those upset alert games. With that being said... If you already saw my Alabama prediction video, I did predict Texas A&M to beat Alabama, and I think that's going to happen. I think Texas A&M does defeat Alabama here in a close one-score type ball game, and I got Texas A&M improving to 5-1. and one. Then it's Tennessee next on the road on October the 14th. Big game here in the SEC West versus SEC East matchup. Uh, this is the first time that these two teams are meeting in a 12-game regular season schedule since 2016. And that was, a, that was a long time ago. It's been years to come, but you now they're finally playing in a really big matchup here. Uh, Tennessee definitely is going to have the offense to compete with this Texas A&M defense. I think this is a shootout here between these two teams, but usually it's home field advantage that plays the difference when these 50-50 games happen. And with that being said, I think Tennessee gets a pretty close win here over Texas A&M, and I think Tennessee gives Texas A&M their second loss of the season. That's an interesting one, though. That's an interesting game there in the month of October. And then they'll get a bye week after playing that Tennessee game. They'll play South Carolina here on October the 28th. South Carolina is a team that has a lot of question marks. They lost production a lot on the defensive side of the football. But you got Spencer Rather coming back. That could be one of the top ten quarterbacks in the country heading into next year. But Texas A&M has home field advantage in this game. And I really don't see this game being all that close. I think the Aggies defense is better by this time. With that being said, I think Texas A&M gets a good win over South Carolina here by a couple touchdowns. And I think the bye week really helps them out as well. So I got Texas A&M defeating South Carolina by a couple scores. And then they get to the month of November. They'll play Ole Miss on the road next year. And Ole Miss is kind of similar to Tennessee. They're going to have the offense to really beat this Texas A&M defense out. I think it's another shootout type game here between these two teams. Uh, you got Ole Miss that's going to go for it here on fourth down on the offensive side of the football, no matter what territory it is. I mean, they're going to keep that defense of Texas A&M on the field perhaps the whole entire game. And I think it's going to be definitely a struggle for Texas A&M to stop that Ole Miss offense. But I think Texas A&M will compete in this game. But at the end of the day, it's a shootout for me. It's a 50-50 game. I like Ole Miss here in a close one on the road here for Texas A&M. And I got Texas A&M now um, falling to 6-3. and three. Then it's Mississippi State on November the 11th here at home. I really don't see Mississippi State being all that good of a team this year. But I think they're definitely capable of, you know, competing against Texas A&M. But this is a home game. Let's face it, it's a home game for Texas A&M. Uh, they're hungry after a loss to Ole Miss on the road. I think Texas A&M gets a couple touchdown win here against the Bulldogs. And I got them improving to 8-3 and three after a win over Albany Christian as well. And then they'll end things out here with LSU on the road on November 25th. This is a rival game. You never know what to expect between these two teams. And Texas A&M definitely got the better of LSU last year. The offense just really got things going. Uh, the defense, they shut down that LSU defense. It kind of ruined their college football playoff hopes as well. I mean, LSU is going to be a great team this year. They're definitely going to have the offense under Jaden Daniels at quarterback. I could expect a really big shootout here between these two teams, but let's be honest, it's a tough place to play in Death Valley. I just don't see Texas A&M going on the road and defeating LSU. I don't think that's going to happen. I think LSU is just way too talented, and with that being said, I think Texas A&M lose that one on the road here at LSU, maybe by a couple scores or maybe by a touchdown, but I think they definitely will compete in this game, no doubt about it. 
And I got Texas A&M finishing with an overall record of 8-4 for 2023. I think that's a good prediction for Texas A&M. But the, the, the schedule really gets to them. The schedule is really tough for them. They do have to play Tennessee on the road out of the East. And they also have to play Miami on the road in the non-conference. And then you got some tough road games at Ole Miss and LSU. But you get Alabama at home at least. And I think they're definitely capable of going 9-3. and three. Maybe perhaps 10 and 2, but I think 9 and 3 would be best case scenario. Uh, worst case scenario would be probably 7 and 5 or 6 and 6. It would really shock me if this team didn't make it to a bowl game this year after a 5 and 7 record last year. Uh, this is a year that Texas A&M should get to a bowl game, but not really capable of going to the SEC championship. But that's my official prediction for the Texas A&M Aggies at 8 and 4 for 2023. Give me your thoughts on the Tex- on this Texas A&M team down in the comments below. What do you think their record is in 2023? And stay tuned here for more sports content videos on the Lucas Ross Sports Channel.